Black Flame of the Amazon, featuring Harold Noyce, world-famous explorer in person. <laughs> And so today we find Mr. Noyce and Pedro busily making last-minute preparations to shove off upriver on the heels of Butch Grogan and Limey Scroggin. Mr. Noyce is convinced that before Mr. Brady, the father of Jimmy and Jean, can be rescued, it is necessary to have Grogan and Scroggins put into the hands of the Brazilian authorities. Quick pursuit is necessary, so instead of a big river canoe manned with Indians, Mr. Noyce and Pedro have selected a two-man canoe. This for speed. They will do their own paddling. Right now, we find the two men talking about something that has them puzzled at the moment. I just wish I knew what was in the minds of those two youngsters right now. It's just as I mentioned to Morton. They're altogether too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> si, senor. They are the most quiet she has ever been. Mm. You know, I watch them and I see them whisper. Yes? Yeah? Si, senor. And they laugh softly. Laughing softly, huh? Si, senor. And they was wink with the one eye. Oh. Si, senor. They are laugh softly and wink. Wink. Wink at whom? Well, they was wink at one from the other. Uh -huh. The senor Jean, he wink one time and whisper. Uh -huh. Then the senorita, she laugh. Then she say something, and they both laugh, and also they both wink. Yes, Pedro, and you know what that means, don't you? <laughs> the senor, most certainly. It means just one thing. What you call him, the monkey business, yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they are undoubtedly cooking up a nice lot of plans and schemes. I'm convinced they intend to follow us upriver. Oh, but, senor, they could not do it. This is the one most dangerous river, and the more up we go, the less better it is. Yes, I know it. And that is my only reason for leaving them behind. Rogan and Scroggins are ahead of us. Just what they are going to do, well, your guess is as good as mine. Si, senor. And Grogan, with perhaps many Indians to help him, we will be captured again, eh? Uh-huh. Oh, well, we have been captured many times before, senor. Yes, but if you'll recall, the last time we almost landed in a specially prepared anthill. <laughs> si, senor. And they would have put us in those anthills, too, if the senor Jim and the senorita hadn't do plenty much thing to scare the day lightnings out of those Indians. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I won't ever forget that, either, Pedro. Oh, oh the, the senor Morton. He has come now. See? Si? Oh, looks like he's in a hurry, too. Maybe he has discovered something, huh? <laughs> Well, nice. It mm. looks as if your suspicions are well-founded. And the two little rapscallions actually mean to travel along behind us? Huh? Oh, nothing surer. And they've succeeded in drafting into their services a most valuable ally, Quito. Mm, you'll talk to Quito, then? Oh, oh no, not at all. Huh? Quito is purposely keeping out of my way. When Quito wants to keep out of anybody's way, he can do it better than anyone I ever knew. Then how did you learn of the plans? Oh, I haven't learned any plans. Oh. I'm just putting two and two together. By George, Noyce, they make four. Yeah. Look now, there's been some very unusual trading going on at my post within the last hour. Unusual trading? Oh, yes, indeed. For some unknown reason, the people in Cato's village have suddenly acquired a decided taste for canned pork and beans, mm. and canned peaches, <laughs> and even canned salmon. <laughs> well, pretty slick, eh? <laughs> yeah, you know, Martin, you have to admire those two. 
When they go after something, there's no halfway measures at all. <laughs> Extraordinarily clever the way they're handling this affair, Noyce. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Keto is the middleman, as it were. Yes, yeah, so I see. Keto gets some of his people to come down to the post mm-hmm. and trade for canned beans and peaches and sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> And then Jimmy and Jean will trade flashlights and maybe some firecrackers and things like that, and in return, get the can for it. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I tried to get hold of Keto and just wanted to find out just what it all meant. Wanted to ask him how come his people were suddenly taking to white man's food. But you didn't find Keto. Almost oh, certainly not. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> the rascal may be somewhere in the brush right now, listening to everything we've said. Well, Morton, it's up to you. Keto must be persuaded to stay here, and he must stop lending any assistance to Jimmy and Jean. Oh, I agree with you, Noyce, but uh, may I ask just how you would handle this situation? Well... After all, you know, Keto is his own boss. He stays around here, he assists me, but only because he so desires. Uh, if Keto takes it into his head to go elsewhere, I couldn't stop him. Yes, I see your point, Morton. But why should Keto be so anxious? Why should he turn his loyalty to strangers after being with you all these years? Well, for this one reason, Noyce, Keto and the Brady youngsters have something very much in common. Yeah? These three have combined forces against a common evil, Butch Grogan. Then Keto has some grievance against Butch Grogan also. Huh? Oh, surely. Uh, didn't you know? Know what, Morton? That uh, Keto and Grogan are the deadliest enemies. Well, no, that's news. Well, uh, it's this way, Noyce. When the Brady expedition came up here about uh, four years ago, they stopped off here at my post yeah. and spent two days with me. Mr. Brady uh, changed canoemen here, you know. Mm-hmm. The downriver Indians didn't relish uh, heading any further up country. Too much bad magic, you know. Yes, I've experienced that same thing in days gone by. Well, then, uh, as perhaps you know, Booch Grogan was acting as guide for the Brady expedition. And right here at the post, he hired an entire new crew, all from Quito's village. And some of Keto's relatives then went away with Grogan. Oh, surely. But most important, Keto's father. He was uh, chief of the tribe. He went along as interpreter. Oh, now I understand. And I suppose Grogan mutinied up country and stole Mr. Brady's map, and there was trouble. Mm, enough of it to prevent Keto's father from ever returning home to his village. Uh, so. And you think then... Oh, that... nothing for certain, Noyce. One lone survivor returned oh, about a year later. He was in a bad way, but whatever he told at the village did just two things. It automatically made young Keto a chief, and it also made him an avowed enemy of Grogan. Hmm. And I suppose, as usual, he took the solemn obligation to see that Butch Grogan would be brought to the tribal judgment seat. Hmm, exactly. And now you also see just why Keto enlisted with Jimmy and Jean. Yes. And now I know exactly how difficult it's going to be to keep those three here while I'm gone. All right. Uh, but uh, listen, Noyce. Have you uh, forbidden them to follow you? No. Why should I? I have no authority to do so. They came into the jungles here without my help. I merely ran across them. Yes, but uh, supposing you did issue strict orders that they were to stay here until you returned? Yes, I thought of that. But supposing I ask you a question, Morton. Mm-hmm. Supposing your father was known to be a prisoner further upriver from here. Supposing you were ordered to stay behind by a stranger, remember? Mm-hmm. Just what would you do? <clears throat> George and I, sir, I just wouldn't stay. I'd want to go to where my father was, just as quickly as canoes and paddles would take me. Well, then, that's the answer to why I haven't ordered Jimmy and Jane to stay here while we proceed up country. No, Morton, it has to be done a little more uh, diplomatically, if you see what I mean. <laughs> yes. Well, I wish you all kinds of good luck. Okay. If you succeed, you're a better diplomat than I give you credit for being. I'm afraid it'll take more than ordinary diplomacy. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I know it will. <laughs> then uh, what have you to suggest? Well, only one thing, Morton, and it may work. Look now, you already know that they are in cahoots with Quito, that they're quietly collecting canned goods, yeah. food, and supplies for an upriver journey. Oh, no, without a doubt, Noyce. I'm convinced of that. Well, then, what we have to do is make their departure an impossibility. Well, uh, we could stage a fake Indian uprising might have the two of them captured by the Indians and held prisoners. Or... No, but it's no go, Noyce. This is Keto's country. Yes, I know what you mean. There could be no uprising, even a fake one, unless Keto said so. Mm-hmm. And the next nearest tribe is, well, uh, let's see, uh, oh, about a hundred miles upriver, and there could be no fake about that. Any uprising with them would have to be the real thing, you understand? All right, then suppose we try something else, less yeah. menacing. Mm-hmm. I uh, have this in mind. They'll need canoes, at least one battle long, 
You have plenty of them here. Oh, oh surely. Better than a dozen, all told. Well, then, very likely one of your canoes will go astray. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Jimmy and Jean and Cato push off. Yeah. Oh, they won't steal it. <laughs> Most likely you'll find the purchase price left for you in some easily found place. Oh, uh, you suggest, then, that perhaps I should have the canoes, all of them spirited away? Without a canoe, they couldn't leave, you know. Well, that could be done. But could you spirit your canoes away to some place where Keto couldn't locate them? Oh, by George, I couldn't, no. <laughs> Keto would locate them in no time. Yeah, that's what I mean. No, Morton, we'll leave all of the canoes right where they are, as if we didn't suspicion a thing, you understand? Oh, yes, I'll do anything in my power to help my word on that noise. Good. Now, suppose you keep an eye open. One of the canoes will be selected, then we'll follow the stowing away of the necessary gear, the food, and yes, so forth. Uh -huh. Now, are all your dugouts down there at the landing? Oh, no, I have several pulled up close to the bank among the overhanging growth, hidden, so to speak, out of plain sight from any wandering Indian party that might drop down here. Oh, good. Well, then, that's where to watch closest. Cato knows where the hidden dugouts are, and very likely the three of them have started packing already. Oh, very likely. I'll soon find out. Old Nick Clow used to be one of the best warriors that ever followed trail. I'll give him the job as lookout. As soon as he discovers just which canoe is being prepared for a journey, I'll let you know. Very good. But please don't interfere with the packing at all. And don't question any further trading. Oh, no. Let them have all the stuff they need. Yeah. Plenty and to spare. But uh, may I ask just how you propose to prevent their dugout from leaving? Well, <laughs> I'll leave that up to Pedro here. Uh, Pedro. Si, senor. Uh, will you just take a little quiet stroll down to my batalong and get that little toolbox? Si, senor. Uh, don't let the youngster see you, understand? Oh, they will not see me, senor. Uh. But uh, what will I do when I get those little toolbox? Uh, yes, that's uh, what I would like to know also. Oh, it's just a little trick. It has to be a trick, Morton, so that <laughs> they will laugh at it. Oh, but it has to be efficient enough to detain them. Mm -hmm. We have to make their departure well, uh, sort of... Uh, <laughs> and you mean if you can make their departure... Uh, wait, no, not departure, but intended departure, eh? <laughs> oh, but, uh, Noyce, I'm very much in the dark. <laughs> well, uh, Morton, as you know, uh, packing a big, heavy battle along is a long, hard job. Now, supposing you had one all packed and ready to push off, yeah. and you discovered that no matter how expertly you handled the paddles, the canoe just didn't seem to make very much headway. Oh, you mean to anchor it to the bank or something? Well, no, but uh, have you heard of a sea anchor? Oh, surely. Yes. Well, we'll put a new kind of sea anchor where it won't be seen unless someone tips the bat along upside down. And it takes a crew of big men to do that. Yes, Morton, I think we can make their departure quite annoying. <laughs> So that's what Mr. Noyes means to do. Fasten a sea anchor to the underside of that big native dugout. And when Jimmy, Jean, and Keto push off into the river, that big boat will want to go backwards instead of upriver. But wait, wouldn't it be funny if while Mr. Noyes is planning this stunt, that something else is being planned? Mr. Noyes doesn't know it yet, but it looks as if the big laugh might be on him. <laughs> 